Hi, John Sarton here with the Rio Grande Jewelry Tech Team. Today I'm here to talk to you about the L160 Hydrogen Torch. It's a four torch unit. I'm going to show you how to maintain it and also a little bit about troubleshooting. Okay, so uh, maintenance on the machine is, is pretty straightforward. It's not, uh, it's not really hard to do. Um, you are going to be replacing uh, or topping off your uh, electrolyte solutions, uh, depending on how much you use this, but most likely daily you're going to be topping off these solutions. You're also going to be topping off uh, the uh, flux in your booster tank as well. Uh, so let me run through that really quick. I'll, I'll just kind of talk about doing that. I'm going to put on some gloves. Now, you want the machine to be shut down for at least an hour um, before you do this. Uh, it's going to uh, relieve any pressure that might be in the machine. Um, there's, there's still going to be some pressure in this machine, and this is what you have to really think about before you open up the pressure cap. Um, you're going to refill your electrolytes or, or top it off with distilled water um, through this pressure cap. And you don't want to remove the pressure cap before you remove the uh, booster tank. So let me get these out of the way. So the first thing that you're going to do whenever you need to top off your fluids, you know you're going to need to top off your fluids whenever the yellow light comes on. Um, so let's go ahead and take this off first. So we're going to pull the booster tank. And at this time, you can top off your flux solution if needed, and then go ahead and remove the pressure tank. If you do this backwards, if you, if you open up the pressure cap before you take the booster tank off, the vacuum that's in this machine can actually cause uh, flux to be drawn into your electrolyte tank. If you do that, you're going to foul out your solution, and then you're going to have weak flames or maybe no flames at all. So uh, let's go ahead and pop this off. Now, uh, you want to go slow with this. This does have a, a uh, safety feature on it that will relieve any pressure that might still be in the tank before the cap comes off. Um, and then go ahead and pull your cap completely off. At this time, top your solutions off with the distilled water. Remember to flip the switch into the fill position on the unit. Uh, fill up until the red light just turns on, and then uh, at that time, stop filling. You don't want to overfill the tank. If you overfill the tank, you can actually cause uh, that liquid, the pressure can cause that liquid to go into your lines. So don't overfill the tank on this unit. Um, make sure that you stop as soon as the red light comes on. So, so we'll put that pressure cap back on. And this is really the only uh, maintenance item, the daily maintenance item that you're going to have to do. The unit needs to be run at least 10 minutes a week. So if, uh, just, if you're not planning on using it, 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 use it at least 10 minutes a week. What can happen if you don't is there's a check valve in here that I'm going to show you here in a bit that can get stuck. And if that check valve gets stuck, then you won't get pressure to your hoses, to your, to your torch handles. So you won't have any, anything to, to solder with. Um, if that happens, uh, I'll show you again. I'll, you take the check valve out, soak it in hot water, um, make sure that, uh, that it is moving freely, put it back in the machine, and you'll be good. You're going to be performing a yearly maintenance on this machine. Uh, remember, the only thing that you're really going to do as far as daily maintenance is uh, top off your solution uh, with distilled water. Uh, the initial uh, 1,080 grams of electrolyte is enough for a year for this unit. So uh, all you're going to be is topping it off with distilled water. You're going to be uh, daily filling up your flux tank. And then uh, you're going to be producing or, or performing a yearly maintenance on the unit um, every year. And that includes replacing your electrolyte solutions, and it includes this kit. 
So the annual maintenance kit comes with a, uh, a length, length of hose to, for to, or replacement hoses. It comes with flashback arresters. Now it comes with two flashback arresters because this machine, uh, it does have the potential for a flashback. And I'll discuss uh, the flashback uh, when we're talking about replacing this. Uh, it's going to come with the gaskets that you need. It's going to come with a new check valve. And it's going to come with this really big O-ring. Uh, this big O-ring is actually for a five-year maintenance on the machine. So you don't want to, uh, you're not going to be doing this every year. Um, the five-year maintenance uh, is uh, a little bit more detailed. Uh, but uh, this is just a, 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 I'm just showing you the yearly maintenance right now. So just go ahead and set that off to the side. Along with this, you're going to need some tools. You're going to need a really large flat bladed screwdriver. You're going to need a probe and you're going to need an adjustable wrench. So with this, we are able to, uh, we're able to perform the yearly maintenance. So let's start off with, uh, before you start, again, you're going to be removing these tanks for your yearly maintenance. You, uh, you remove your, uh, your flux tank first, then you remove your pressure cap. You will then uh, remove the solution out of this tank and dispose of uh, properly. You'll need to check your, uh, your, your local statutes as to uh, how they want you to dispose of this solution. Uh, and then uh, rinse the tank out and then you'll uh, refill the tank with a new electrolyte solution. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to change out your gaskets and on this pressure cap there is a gasket right in the bottom of that cap and that is this gasket right here. So you'll use a probe, uh, reach in there uh, pull that gasket out. This unit actually has had a uh, yearly maintenance, so I'm not going to, do, to destroy that gasket. But uh, you just you just pull that one out. You stick this one back in. Simple enough. You're done with the gasket change on your pressure cap. There is this gasket right here, and this gasket actually fits on the bottom uh, of this block that seals the uh, booster tank to the to the bottom of the block. So uh, it's pretty easy to pull that one out. I'll just go ahead and just want to screw this out. And there is the gasket. So that's the other gasket that you will change. Okay, go ahead and put that back in. So the next maintenance item is the, uh, replacing the flashback arrestor. The flashback arrestor is under this cap, so with an adjustable wrench. Uh, just go ahead and loosen that cap up. Pull the cap off and behind the cap you're going to see a little black washer and a, kind of like a brass end here. You will need a, a pair of uh, needle nose tweezers to grab a hold of that end. So add that to the list of required tools and you're going to pull that flashback arrestor out. All right. So what the flashback arrestor does is it actually stops any flame that might actually come from the, the uh, torch handle through the hose back to the machine. So if that was to happen, the heat would actually melt a little plastic valve in here and shut the flow down to your torches so that the, the flame does not go into the machine. So it's a safety feature. Um, so this is something that you'll always want to change yearly and like I mentioned earlier you will probably have a flashback on this machine um, and it you will know it whenever it happens because it is kind of like a loud explosion. Um, the, uh, the possibilities are greater with this machine because you're using four different torches so if, uh, if at one time one torch is actually starved of fuel because the uh, adjustment knob is not set at the correct, uh, uh, the correct adjustment for the power, then you can actually get a flame to crawl back into the torch. 
Um, so that's why it comes with two flashback arresters. Um, if you never f have a flashback, that's great. Uh, you'll just have an extra one on hand. So let's go ahead and put that back in. Now you see, this is another black uh, gasket, rubber gasket, and that is found in this pack of your flashback arresters. Also, right around the cap itself is another gasket. So that one will have to be changed as well. So you just take a probe, peel that one off, replace that gasket. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back together. Okay, the next maintenance item is the check valve, and that is found under this cap. So we'll go ahead and loosen this one up. Pull that off. Now, you're going to change this rubber gasket, this rubber O-ring, and that actually, that will uh, come in your kit. <clears throat> now to remove the check valve, you need to use a, a large flat bladed screwdriver, and you're gonna reach in there, and there is a, a threaded washer, uh, basically, um, and you're going to pull that, thread that one out. So it's like a bolt with a hole in it. Now, looking back here, you can see the check valve. Let's go ahead and pull the check valve out. <clears throat> now on the end of the check valve, there is a gasket or, or a uh, O-ring. Um, this will come with your replacement check valve. So make sure that that is in place before you put the check valve back in. There is a screw head right here, but do not touch that screw head. Do not adjust it. That has been pre-adjusted by the factory, and if you take it out of adjustment, then it's not going to function properly. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and put this one back in. And these are really the only items that you have to worry about on a yearly maintenance. So as soon as you get that, Tighten back up. Now with all of these fittings, you don't want to over tighten them. You just want to, you want to bring them down till they're snug um, and then a little bit, uh, a little bit of uh, more of a turn. You do not want to crush any of the O-rings or the gaskets. Uh, if you do, then you're going to get a leak. So tighten this down just to where it becomes firm and stop. Okay, and that is the maintenance on this machine. You can replace your hoses and, uh, and then you'll be back up and running. Okay, I'm going to uh, cover a little bit of troubleshooting for the machine. Uh, the first thing we'll start off with is a check valve. Uh, remember I mentioned the check valve and if you didn't run this machine for 10 minutes a week that that check valve could possibly become stuck. Um, what that check valve is, is it has a a small piston in here that you can see actuating and what will happen is if you don't run it for that uh, 10 minutes a week then uh, the solution can actually cause this check valve to stick and if it's stuck then it's not going to produce any gas so um, one indication is you can see on the uh, on the gauge here that we are producing, we're producing about 160 uh, liters per hour. And if uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mimic a stuck check valve um, by shutting off all of the torches and not allowing any hydrogen to go to the torch tips. Uh, and what this does is it actually builds up pressure. This is uh, this machine does have a safety feature, and this is one thing. You see how it dropped? So it dropped to zero. So if you fire up your machine, you start to see a reading, and then it drops to zero, chances are you've got a block in a line somewhere, and the check valve is usually the culprit there. Okay? So um, that is why you need to make sure that you always leave one torch flowing. 
um, especially on this machine because this does have the regulated handles. It's really easy to shut off all of the torches and then you're going to have that happen. But if that happens, your torch valves are open, then it's, chances are it's the check valve. So you go through the process, remove the check valve, drop it into hot water, uh, make sure that it, is, uh, that it is moving, put it back into the machine, and you should be up and running. Okay, one of the other important things that you have to remember is uh, to use the proper setting for, uh, the proper power setting for the tip that you have. Now, if you are running all four torches at the same time, you're going to be running this at max pr uh, power. But if you're utilizing torches individually, um, you are going to be adjusting the, the torch accordingly. Um, if, you, if you have too much pressure <coughs> that is actually going to one tip, you can see how it's going to blow itself out, okay? So that is, uh, that is with way too much pressure going to a single tip. Um, and so you can kind of regulate that on this torch by turning down. You can actually regulate that. Um, and you can leave it at the, the highest power setting. The only thing is, is you might get uh, back pressure at that power setting, which will essentially shut the flow off um, of, uh, of hydrogen. So if you're only using one tip, you want to make sure that you are going to use the correct size or the correct power setting for that tip. And that uh, comes with the, inst the instructions on the machine. So uh, another thing is to use the correct power setting is if you are running a tip too low, you can actually burn a tip. Um, and let me see if I can show you what that looks like. Four torch unit's a little bit more difficult to get it to do it. All right, so as you see, the tip is starting to glow. There it goes. And I'm gonna shut it off and pull it off. Okay. Um, so that tip is actually burnt now. So if I would have allowed that flame to continue on and I didn't shut this off in time, I could have had a flashback at that time. So it's really important to always uh, follow the instructions of the machine. Make sure that uh, you're using the correct power setting for the tips that you're using. If you're using all four torches at once, it's always going to be on full. Um, and uh, that's pretty simple. That's a, that's the, the machine is a pretty simple machine to operate and use. So that is, uh, that is the maintenance on this machine. We covered uh, daily, we covered uh, annually, and we covered some uh, troubleshooting tips for this. So I really hope that this uh, information has been helpful. And if you have any questions, give us a call.